What a day. Hello, John Murray. It's a major Monday. Yes, it is. And we're live. We are. And it's a major storm going on outside. So kudos to the studio audience for braving the, the monsoon. I know. And coming and hanging out with us. So many of our colleagues are in repeats, but we're live today, so. I know we're live today with so much rain out there. Thank God I had a wig on. That's my umbrella. <laughs> oh my gosh. I just gotta tell y'all, we had such a weekend. Oh my goodness. We all flew to uh, 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 some of my staff, John Murray, our uh, showrunner, executive producer for Need a Win, and me, we all flew to Los Angeles for the Daytime Emmy Awards. <laughs> yes. And I tell you, but let me let you know. Now, Emmy nominee Willie Sinclair III of the Milwaukee Sinclairs, he styled me in this beautiful Sergio Hudson <laughs> custom-made gown. And I gotta give a shout out to Sergio Hudson because he knows how to bring in the sunshine and the fun with this dress. I, Sergio, I got so many compliments. But here's the thing, I need somebody that's gonna teach me how to handle the red carpet. This must, and I've told y'all I'm so awkward on the red carpet, I do funny, like I do funny. I don't do sexy and all of that stuff. This was so hard, <laughs> like, they had all of these photographers who kept saying, wave like this, over here, Sherry, walk down here, Sherry, flip your hair. It was so much, and I gotta tell y'all, like, I'm trying to do it, I'm trying to smile. They were like, give me sexy pal, and I'm like, oh, how you do? <laughs> I'm trying to literally remember what Tyra Banks said about smizing, and I'm doing this, and I'm going, but I can't see nobody. <laughs> Pout, and then we were on the red carpet, and my little toe was hurting because, just a little one, it's that one that got the corn and the bunion on it. Because they made us walk a, like a mile through the hotel to get to the red carpet. And then when you get there, everybody else who is the star of their show, you have to wait in line. So we're waiting in line, and y'all know ladies, when you just stand in there in high heels, that, that's when every dog starts barking. <laughs> Then my glam squad, they were off to the side. So they, so here's the thing. I'm taking the pictures and they're all, all be, be beyond the photographers and they were all gesturing at one time. Literally, Willie Sinclair III was like, stick your leg out, stick your leg out, pull your dress, pull your dress, wait, put it up. So I'm trying to do that, all of that. Then Rodney John, my makeup artist was like, blow a kiss, blow a kiss. So I'm, ooh, ooh, <laughs> blowing a kiss. Theo, my hairstylist, he was like, pull it on one side, pull it on one side. So I'm trying to flip it and do this and, then, and, and holding my stomach in at the same time. Oh my gosh. It literally was like a robotic, I feel like a robotic Simon Says. Cause like I, and then the, and the paparazzi, they were taking pictures and they kept going, Sherry, look over your shoulder. And I went, I can't, I didn't tweeze that side of my chin. I can't, <laughs> I only tweeze this like right here where the camera's gonna hit. And then another thing on these red carpet things, you can't eat anything. I hadn't eaten like since la that last night because these dresses that you wear, everything you eat, you gonna see. So like, and ladies, y'all know, that bloat is real, okay? 
And if you don't know what I'm talking about, ask your mama, <laughs> all right? You can't have peanuts. You can't have any little snack food because it will all show. And all I was drinking was water, water, but my makeup artist, Rodney John, pulled that out my hand. He said, that's too much. It's too much. <laughs> so the whole time, anytime I'm holding, that was rubbing my stomach because I was so hungry. <laughs> and the two girdles I had on was like digging <laughs> into my stomach. It took four people to put on that second girdle. <laughs> I'm telling you, when you got men grunting, you know it's just woo-wee. <laughs> And then, despite, and then uh, Willie Sinclair, the girdle was on backwards. He trying to pull it around. You ever try to pull a girdle around? I said, that's okay, just leave it alone. <laughs> but despite all of this, I had so much fun at the daytime Emmys. And, um, uh, well, you know. <laughs> now, some of you may have watched it. Unfortunately, I did not win. And there's a thing, like, no, it's it literally, it's okay, because it, when, when I lost, they put, you know, they put the cameras on everybody who's nominated. And so when I lost, the camera was on me, and I had to act like I wasn't disappointed. I was disappointed <laughs> as hell. I literally. <laughs> Literally, because when you work so hard and you just, but my, so my inside voice was like, damn, damn, damn. <laughs> the whole Florida Evans, it, literally, it, but you know, your face has to be, you applaud because you, your other peer, I, I think I lost to Kelly Clarkson, you know she worked just as hard. But this is what I gotta say, this is what I learned. Whoever is presenting an award to somebody, don't be making jokes and wasting time. Like, you gotta say who won. Like, legendary soap actors Mary Beth Evans and Drake Hogeston were making jokes. And, and Drake goes, and the Oscar goes too. You know we ain't no, no Oscars, we at the Emmys. <laughs> so I'm sitting there, the camera's on me, I'm trying to look like I don't even care, like this is, but I'm sitting there, my lips are trembling, every, I'm hot flashing even more, I ain't ate, my stomach bubbling all up. I'm, it took, it literally, it took Drake 30 seconds to open the envelope, but it felt like 10 minutes. Now, fumbling with the card, I understand, because that sucker was wrapped so tight, they had to glue in the envelope since before the strike. So it was had... <laughs> trying to get that thing open. And so I had, like, and so this, I was presenting the final award of the day. <laughs> They gave me the card upside down. It was right side up, upside down. So I'm trying to walk down the stairs holding my train. I'm holding the side of my dress and I'm holding in my stomach, trying to get there. But you know, all the jokes, y'all gotta stop making these jokes before you announce the winner because there's so much nervousness. And my blood pressure went up, my blood glucose went up. <laughs> Everything while they were making the jokes. And um, after I lost, I literally, I was disappointed for about two to five seconds because here's the thing. This is what I teach my son, Jeffrey, and all my nieces and nephews. Sometimes you don't get everything you want, even if you do your best. Sometimes you just don't get it. There's one trophy, there's a bunch of people who want it. And that, it made me say, I'm gonna work harder because I want it next year. I want it next year. So. You know, when you lose, everybody's like, well, you gonna get it, and you, and, and everybody's like, you're my Emmy winner. I, you know, I appreciated all that, but it's okay, because I thought about Angela Bassett, one of the greatest actors of our time. <laughs> Angela Bassett, this was going through my head. She lost the Oscars twice in a row. Even Beyonce never won a Grammy for Album of the Year. This is a woman who made uh, Lemonade, Sasha Fierce, Renaissance, and she never won Album of the Year. The, even when she was on Star Search, Beyonce didn't win. So I said, if Beyonce and Angela Bassett can lose, I, I don't need to be complaining about nothing. <laughs> um, even... Shout out to my sis, Tabitha Brown. She, the category that she won this year, she was nominated twice last year and she didn't win. And she won. Sometimes when you lose, it makes it so much more sweet when you win. And um, that's the way I chose to look at it. 
don't get me wrong, I wanted it, but I was so grateful to even be honored and, and acknowledged and nominated. So thank you to the Emmy Academy for doing that. But you know what? What, what I did uh, when I lost, I, I lost and I came home and when it hit me, I said, you know what I did? I went right to the gym. Okay, this is what I won when I was at the gym. This. When that voice came in that wanted to mope and do this, that other voice that's trying to be stronger, to lift me up, said, go to the gym and work out and you're gonna feel better. You are going to win because you're gonna see results. So I, I, got, I didn't even take off the hair. I still had the glue in my hair. I still had the bangs. I still had the makeup on. I just got up at four in the morning and went. And, and, and that made me feel so much better. But I want to congratulate Kelly Clarkson on your very well-deserved win because you worked your butt off. And I was, you know, going to these Emmys, like, I got a chance to talk to my daytime peers that I never see. I have not seen Jennifer Hudson in years. And I got to stand next to Chicago girls who got talk shows all the way at the Emmys. Two Chicago girls. And literally, and we held hands and said we were so glad that each other had a show and lifted each other up. And Jay Huss said that when she comes to New York, she's gonna stop by and we're gonna sing together. I'm gonna pull that mic, like how Jennifer do all on her show. <laughs> Jennifer, Jennifer will be on her show and be like, you know what, we just happen to have a microphone. Oh my gosh. Right here. And then she'll start singing. They always be singing to her and like Renee Rapp from Sex Lives of College Girls. They did like Beyonce and tore it up. Well, Jennifer, we ain't got the budget. We gonna sing happy birthday uh, to each other when we start singing. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish this off. The next day was the Creative Arts Emmys. And that's the one that they give out. They give out this award to those that didn't make the telecast. Now this is a Christopher John Rogers who made this dress here. And, um, and, and so, I, Gail, I know you want that Christopher John Rogers dress, because you always taking my dresses. But, Gail, you can't handle them headlights. You can't handle them. <laughs> Gail King. <laughs> so the reason why, because this, is, this particular uh, awards uh, ceremony was called the Creative Arts Emmys. And so Willie Sinclair III from Milwaukee Sinclair's, he wanted it to be fun, because it was more casual. So he wanted it to be fun, so he got me this outfit with the headlights on it. Now, here's the problem. When you got that kind of thing, men don't know how to tell you they like your outfit. <laughs> All the men, they would look, and then eyes would get big, then they'd look away like they didn't see nothing. <laughs> and I would have to tell them, I got headlights on my chest. It was designed for that. You can look. You can, you can take a look. But I was so happy for my staff, uh, uh, because uh, unfortunately, none of uh, my staff won. But they were so excited to be there, because a lot of them are first-time nominees, so they were so emotional when they were calling their names, and I felt so good that they were also recognized. And I want to give them a shout out because I was so proud of them. Nani Garcia in the white. Jai Williams, <laughs> right over there with the beard. Irving was in the pink. Jamie Harper, Diana Moda, Sydney Smith, Letitia Queen Boone in the sequence. Latrice Johnson back there. Rodney John, Theo Barrett, Chanel Smith was standing next to me. Willie Sinclair, the third of the Milwaukee Sinclairs, Tristan Zimmerman, Tori Bell, Kristen Oakley, John Murray, and our other executive producer. Uh, our other executive producer, Joelle Dawson Kalia, could not be there, but we missed you so much. And um, I was gonna take everybody out to celebrate at a restaurant, but they fed us at the awards show. So I told them, I'm not spending $40 a plate and y'all done already <laughs> ate. Um, but, and I wanna give a shout out. Willie Sinclair III uh, from the Milwaukee Sinclairs brought his mother. He brought his mother, be, and, and she was so proud of her son. So when they called his name, she was just sitting there. Everybody should have their parent be able to see your accomplishments and what they worked so hard for. So I just, I just want to say this. Attention all daytime Emmys. We are going to work harder, and we will be back next year. That's a promise. So every
everybody, you better get a ticket for your mama. You better, you better bring your mamas with you. So, y'all, the stars of the Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants are still staying true to that sisterhood. Blake Lively, Alexis Bledel, Amber Tamblin, and America, America Ferreira. Now, they shot this movie. Remember Sisterhood of the Traveling Pants? <laughs> that was shot back in um, 2005 when they were in their teens. And over the weekend, America held a special screening of her movie, Barbie and the entire cast came out to support her. So Blake Lively, whose dad, Eric Lively, was my acting coach, uh, Blake said she met these women when she was 16, and she's so lucky to call them friends ever since. And I love seeing this. I love seeing this. Like, I am a big believer of sisterhood and friendship. It's so important, ladies, that we have sisterhood. Because I got to say, Kim Whitley and I were on the red carpet together this weekend. That's, that's 30 years strong, and we were on the red carpet. Because uh, Kim Whitley, look. <laughs> Kim Whitley was also nominated with her cast of The Bay for an Emmy, so she was there with me. And uh, that friendship, <laughs> that friendship is so strong between us, so it was so nice to be on the red carpet. Look, I don't even know what's going on with that hair we both got on. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> but congratulations to all of us for maintaining the sisterhood. <laughs> friendship. So, y'all, we got a great show for you today. <laughs> Later on, A Very Sherry Christmas continues. But up next, we're chatting with actors and game show hosts Jerry O'Connell and Melissa Peterman. <laughs> daytime in their hit show, Pictionary and Person, Place, or Thing. Please welcome Jerry O'Connell and Melissa Peterman. <laughs> you better go, girl. Oh. <laughs> Look at this one. Melissa. <laughs> it is you. You sit right here in the middle. And... Get out of here, Jerry. Oh. Stop that. Get out of here. You better stop. Oh. It was so exciting. I kissed your hand because I wanted to kiss the hand that touched Oprah. Oh. <laughs> I know that's right. Like y'all, y'all gotta get with Oprah. Like that was that was a special. That was an event. I that cried was on, an event. I cried I'm telling you. And I watching that opening when you were talking before she came out and you were choked up. I was watching. I was crying. I mean, it's just it's it was so. Special to see you're, you know, looking up to, looking yeah. up to, and she's here, and I'm telling you, there's a little girl watching you, and you're, you're, you're her Oprah. Oh yeah. man, Oprah. <laughs> it was so funny, and it was so cool that that Oprah stayed the whole episode. I was talking to John, and he was saying um, that Bevy Smith texted, "Man, Oprah stayed for the deals and steals and everything." <laughs> She did. Well, if I'm if, if I'm some little girl's Oprah, I hope it's a stepman out there. Shoot. <laughs> I want to say for y'all, welcome to the show. Like, Melissa, welcome back, because Thank you were you. on my mom's panel. You're my mom's panel woman. But, Jerry, this is the first time, like, me yeah. and you were together on this set. Oh, but we worked together because you guest co-hosted on The View. I did. With, with all of the ladies. So yeah. do, you, do you think that was Jerry with his hands and we were. Oh, look yes, there. back when think... I didn't have gray hair. Oh, look <laughs> at you. And, but still, you still look the same. Whatever you got, whatever you, like, putting on. But... Um, it's a, it's a over-the-counter hair dye. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, working with all the women on The View, like, you think that prepared you for all of you the know, women on The Talk? It's funny. Um, I, I mean, I love working on The Talk. I work on The Talk. It's on uh, another network. We love um, you on The Talk. And, uh, and your good friend, Cheryl Underwood, is yes, there. Funny. And we have a lot of fun. Um, it's, it, like you, we keep it light, you know? Yes, we don't get as serious. Um, we're not flipping tables. We're not... Um, yet. You yet. Know, <laughs> yet. Um, we try to keep it light. But I do want to say, watching your show, Sherry, you bring so much joy into everyone's Oh, man. Jerry, I appreciate that. Houses. Uh, As do you. And it was funny. Even when, like, 
I saw your holiday decorations that were out. I was like, man, I gotta get a shirt to come on. <laughs> he show. did. I gotta, like, look the part. He's been talking about this shirt for like days. Like he was so excited <laughs> to wear this shirt on your it, show. It is. Well, it's true. But Sherry, your your joy is infectious, and we we really appreciate Thank you. Thank you. But this is about you. I appreciate it. I want to give you your flowers. <laughs> That's why I love you, Jerry. And Melissa, I want to say I love you on Reba. Yeah. Uh, you are like. You are the cat's meow on Reba. And this is what I love when you when you work with the cast for so long. You guys recently had like a cast we dinner. Did. You got together, had dinner. How was that? Um, it was just like going back home. You know, we all, yes. you know, when you spend that much time with people, that they become your family. And just because you're not making the show, you're still really tight. Like I talk about it, like I th Reba and Joanna were the first people that met my son when he was born yes. at the hospital, oh. you know? And so that dinner was fabulous. And Okay, just love it. might we have like a reboot of Reba or a Reba coming yeah. back? I mean, I would love it. I think the whole cast would love it. I think I think people would love it. I think yes, they want to see would. that. And you know, it's it's just a matter of timing always. You know, when the yeah. time is right, it'll happen. And it's, it's not in my hands, so I trust above. So we'll it's see. Jerry, I, I keep noticing when you're talking to Melissa, you're you're touching oh, her I'd like chin. To I want to I, I want to give you consent to. <laughs> Girl, get in there. No, further, far, further. That was Did a spot. You oh! <laughs> oh! Mm, I you think know. that was a spank. <laughs> <laughs> Let me I'm tell on you. Sherry's naughty list. <laughs> I want to say to you, are you like this because you 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 know how to uh, how to play with women? Because your whole house is filled with women. Like you, like you got yeah. your wife Rebecca Romaine. You sure. got your daughters Charlie oh. and Dolly. Like, are you this playful at home with all that female energy? <laughs> my uh, my daughters are 14. They're 14 year old twins. Well, it's um it's insane. Get me out of there, somebody. <laughs> you talking about you get, get you out of there? Get <laughs> me out of there Why? now. Why? We have one. I have one. I have a cat. That's a male cat. And like <laughs> things are going, things are going on. I'm always getting yelled at. And like there's just one male cat who will just be on the counter, and the two of us are just like. Now I know, oh my gosh, and I know because I follow you every the holidays, you do those sexy Christmas tree yeah. photos. <laughs> yeah. So. Now how, how do your family, how do they feel about this right here? My wife you loves- know, They're much more, I, I like that they're bigger. They're bigger, <laughs> I can see them here, they're just giant. Look at you! I, look, I'm very, I'm a very, I'm a man of simple needs, Sherry. Okay, <laughs> I need two things every year. I love underwear, okay, yes. and I love like a pillow, like a throw pillow that I use. There's one pillow right there. there. I went to New York University. Shout out Violets. My wife got me that pillow. And then another year, my wife got me that classy bougie ratchet a crochet <laughs> pillow, Beautiful. which is Beautiful. my favorite. I this put is, my I, head on that every night. I love that NYU, myself. this is a picture they got like in, in, on the wall at yes. NYU. I do want to say these yes. photos here, especially like down, I don't know if you saw that other shit, like down around there, the, like we keep our air conditioning very cold, so like it's not. <laughs> I'm much. See, nobody uh, was even looking, Jerry. Yeah, I'm, I'm nobody like, was even looking. That's not you, a. Now Pointed it out. We it's not an it. accurate depiction of me. <laughs> Jerry, if you don't sit still, oh my gosh. Because I gotta ask Melissa. I gotta let's ask go, Melissa. Let's go. I gotta ask oh. Melissa. So oh. Melissa, now yeah. you and I both, we have 18 year olds. <sighs> Jeffrey's 18, your son is 18. 18, your, Riley's 18. You, do you have any tips for me? No. <laughs> No, I I would love tips from you. I don't know. It's it's so hard because so hard. They're half. They have a foot as an adult and half as like a child. Exactly. Like one minute I'm like I think he could run a corporation, yep. and the next like I don't think he can do a blender. <laughs> I, That's you my know, son. It's hard. So I'm just day by day. It, day I'm by telling day. you every day. It just they just want you to be there, but they don't want you to be there. It's yeah. crazy. We got to get them together. Let's I would love that. The two I would 18 love that. year olds. Now I gotta say I I watch both of your shows when I'm sitting at home on the couch or in my dressing room. Your game shows yeah. person, place, or thing, yeah. and person, place, or thing, and Pictionary, yeah. okay? 
Thank you, and congratulations for your pickups. And now both shows, they have a watch and win happening right now for mm -hmm. both. Can you tell us about it? Yeah, you, we have the, the QR code. You can scan that QR code and you can get behind the scenes footage. You can watch from home. You can win from home, which is lovely because you can be in sweatpants or the soft right. pants, as I like to call them. Uh -huh. And you could win money just from watching and playing at home, right? Click on that QR code. Look, it's not Melissa and my money. It's Fox's yes. money. <laughs> you <laughs> have to give care. it away. You, they, yeah. you gotta give it away. Just give it away. Okay, and everybody comes on the show. Y'all bring so much fun to Person, Place, a Thing and Pictionary. I gotta yeah. say, it is so enjoyable watching both of y'all on the show. These are the yeah. right people for the show, so congratulations. Thank you. But, you know what? We couldn't have two game show hosts on here without having a little fun. So y'all yeah. bring in the candy cane. Okay. Bring in the candy cane. Okay, y'all, so come on down here. here. Oh, here we go, ladies. Thank you so here much, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you, Okay, Jerry. so I'll be right here in the middle. Okay. okay, so on TikTok, there's this popular game on TikTok. It is called Fishing for Candy Canes. So each of us, we're gonna have 30 seconds to fish these candy canes from one bowl to the other. That bowl. Okay. okay, now the only catch is you can only use your mouth. All right, oh. you gotta use your mouth. Okay. okay, so we're gonna put, y'all put it in your, we're gonna put 30 seconds on the clock. We use this. You use this, this you're gonna put it in your mouth, okay? Okay, you, uh, you go in your mouth, okay, and go! <laughs> Logan Salva, it touched my heart so much. Logan was diagnosed with a life-threatening disorder and was in need of a liver transplant. His parents, Rasika and Skylar, went to countless doctor visits and they had many sleepless nights until last spring when they received the gift of a lifetime, a new liver for Logan. <laughs> Please welcome, <laughs> please welcome Rasika, Skyler, and their son, Logan. Thanks for having us. Absolutely. First of all, I'm just so grateful because y'all drove 16 hours from Florida to be here. <laughs> but Rasika, look, he's like, give me a kiss, mama. <laughs> now, Rasika, Logan was born with Allagel so, uh, syndrome. Now, what is that and how did it affect Logan? So Allagel syndrome is a very rare genetic disorder. One in 35,000 children are born with it every day. And we had never heard of it. So it can be passed on from mom and dad to baby. And sometimes it just happens spontaneously. In Logan's case, it was spontaneous. So it's a huge surprise. It can affect multiple organs in the body, liver, kidneys, heart, brain, bone structure, everything. And in Logan's case, it really hit his liver hard. It hit him hard. Oh, yeah. Now, Skylar, you're the daddy. You know, you want to protect <laughs> your family. How did this affect you and the family? Uh, it was kind of uh, life-altering, in essence. Um, yeah. You know, in the beginning, you're kind of like, all right, we're going to go into it all hands on deck. And then all of a sudden, you're, oh, Every other week, we're, we're another medication we're adding to the list. And right. before you know it, we're up to like 11 medications a day, mm -hmm. twice a day for most of them. And uh, everything's got to be like clockwork. And so as a result, um, he kind of needed special care. And mom was about the only one that could provide that that we trusted enough. And so 
where she got to leave uh, her job to be able to become a full-time caregiver for this lovely little bugger. <laughs> it was overwhelming. I can't even imagine yeah. how overwhelming it was. But then you got the news that there was a liver donor for Logan. Now, how did you find that out? And how did, how did it feel? So longer. we had started the living donor process in January. Yeah. And we had waited and waited, waited for that phone call and prayed every night. And we got so used to getting phone calls where it was, I'm sorry, we've got bad news. He's got a virus. He's got this. He's got that. Got to go to the hospital. And this time I get a phone call. And the first words were, great news. And I froze. I was like, I, am I dreaming? Is this a dream? Great news. And then she started to explain to us that they found a match and it was perfect for Logan. And I remember losing all feeling in my knees. I just started shaking and I was bawling my eyes out. My husband was going in and out of the house doing housework that day, sees me crying down the hall, rushes to me. And then he realizes why I was crying. And it was- You never our... know. You never know if it's something you did or not. So it's something to find out. Well, wasn't anything you did, hubby. <laughs> now, um, the donor who saved Logan's life lives in Pennsylvania, and her name is um, Mackenzie Beach, we found out. And we did not tell you this, but she is joining us on Zoom. So please welcome Mackenzie Beach. <laughs> Mackenzie, welcome to the show. Thank you. Um, welcome to the show, Mackenzie. Now, Mackenzie, why did you become a living donor? Um, one of my coworkers needed a liver, and so I sort of learned about the program and went through the process and wasn't needed for, for that particular individual, but they asked me to stay on as a non-directed or altruistic donor, and I said, of course, there's someone else who's going to need my help. Now, you say that uh, finding, your liver, finding out that, that your liver was going to a child made this that much more important. Yes, it was... I was gonna be able to give a family a chance at relief and hope and um, a second life. Oh, that's so like absolutely amazing. <laughs> I, it's hard. I can't hear. I can't um hear Mackenzie anymore. Yeah. Mackenzie, Mac Mackenzie, I can't. <sighs> okay, y'all. Um, can you, somebody try to fix that? We're having a couple issues. We're gonna get Mackenzie back. We're gonna work on her connection. But while we're doing that. Um, Rasika and Skyler, what does this mean to you that Mackenzie donated part of her liver to Logan? Uh, it's a blessing bigger than I could have ever imagined. Yeah. She didn't just donate a part of her liver. She gave somebody a second chance of life. When oh, they, my God. Yeah. When they told us... <laughs> When they told us about all the things that might happen with a, a, a young infant having yeah. that... It, it did what? She, her liver fit perfectly. As oh, well my as gosh. It, and look at Logan. What, it's, what's a, Okay, good. My stage manager, Phyllis, Phyllis, is telling me that Mackenzie's connection got fixed. But um, guess what? Mackenzie is not on Zoom. She's right here. Mackenzie, can you come on out? How does it feel to meet Logan in person? <laughs> oh, it's amazing. Is he real? Oh, look. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah? <laughs> when you're looking at now, Mackenzie, now Logan took this book. What was it that you were holding? Logan's like, no one. I'm like connected to you. But what is it? What is this book that you're holding, Mackenzie? So this beautiful picture book they made for me and had delivered to me when I was in the ICU recovering. And oh that's how gosh. I learned who my beautiful recipient was. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything you'd like to say to Mackenzie? Um, words can't even describe how grateful I am. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my God. Oh, now, him. Mackenzie, I, Logan feels the connection. Mackenzie, what you did for the, the family was so absolutely amazing. We wanted to do something extra special for you. And I know your husband is sitting in the audience supporting you. So we're going to send you and your hubby to Anguilla for three oh. days. <laughs> because you need a little bit of a break. Your liver needs, the rest of your liver needs to just sit down and rest.
<laughs> Thank you. And Rasika and Skylar, I want to know, what is the latest uh, update on Logan's health? Um, he's doing amazing. I mean, you can see it. He's thriving. He's happy. He's a normal, happy two-year-old boy. <laughs> um, and so right now, he's like, if you don't put this book up, I want mommy. So how is, how is the family doing today? Um, you know, we're, we're getting through it. We're so blessed. We're so thankful. I'm not going to lie, the journey to get here was, was rough. Yeah. It was a struggle. We made a lot of sacrifices. And, you know, I had to leave my job to take care of him full time. And that took a toll on us. So um, yeah. we've, we've got about $50,000 of medical debt racked up that we are working really hard to try and get through. Oh, my gosh. I yeah. can't even imagine. Because uh, all of that medical debt is tough around the holidays, especially. Yeah. And I know that you had told our producers that you were praying for a Christmas miracle so you could even keep your home. Yes. Um, well, I got another surprise for you. Uh, I reached out to our friends at Five Below because they are the holiday solution for all families. And Five Below wants to give you $50,000 to I'll tell you, it's it's an, it's a tremendous weight that's uh, helped lifting because the one thing we did when we bought our home was we decided we were going to raise our children inside of it, and uh, the thought of losing it was pretty scary. Logan, are you happy? You look yeah. pretty happy, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> Mackenzie, Skylar, Rasika, Logan. I want to say thank you so much you. for sharing your story and just love. Love is a bound right here on this couch. And y'all, up next, a very sherry Christmas continues, so keep it right here. Logan! <laughs> sherry will be right back. are today. Come on out, helpers. Oh! Oh, me like it, me like it. It's our associate producer, Jonathan, and our executive assistant, Ashley. All right, hey, guys. Hey, Sherry. Okay, so let's see what we got first. Oh, nice. Okay. It's from It's Sugar, and It's Sugar isn't your ordinary candy store. It's a sugary wonderland. Now, they pride themselves on a wide range of candies and other goodies from all over the world, including your favorites like Sour Patch Kids, Starburst, Nerds, M&Ms, and more. And with more than 100 locations in the U.S. and Canada, you are never too far from your next sweet treat. In studio audience, you are all getting a $200 gift card. With the Seek Metaverse, you're gonna escape to a new reality filled with mindful experiences, sports events, and live concerts. The virtual reality headset puts you right in the middle of the action as you watch the world transform around you. And the 4D wireless headphones provide 360 degrees of sound so you can hear above be and below and all around you for an earth-shaking experience. And studio audience, you are getting a Seek virtual headset and 4D headphones. <laughs> What's last? Oh! It's from Legoland. Now, their holiday Bricktacular has fun built for the whole family now through December 31st. You can ride the carousel with Mrs. Claus, make your own s'mores on Brick Street, and celebrate the season with brand new shows and attractions. And if you've been nice, you may even meet Lego Santa. And studio audience, you are getting four tickets to Legoland New York! QR code on your screen 
or going to SherryShowTV.com. We'll be right back. <laughs> We'll be right back. It's time to play Name That Star. Now, I am here with Kathleen from Kentucky. Hey, Kathleen. So, Kathleen, I am going to give you clues about some holiday movie characters, and you have 45 seconds to guess five correct. So, put your glasses on. Okay, so you can't see. There we go. There we go. You, you got it, girl. All right, so we're gonna put 45 seconds on the clock and go. All right, he loves to spread Christmas cheer. He's a huge fan of maple syrup on his spaghetti. Buddy the Elf. All right, Buddy the Elf. All right, you know him because of his nose. He's the target of Rudolph. Bullying. Oh, Rudolph. Here we go. Who is this man? He's green with envy. Grinch. He, oh, the Grinch. There we go. He's a jolly, happy soul. He's got an iconic corn frosty. cob. A oh, frosty. All right. His big glasses are fragile. Ralphie. He, uh, Ralphie Barker. Oh, my God. You can pull off your glasses. Congratulations, Kathleen. You won a $250 gift Woo. card to Tally and Twine, the destination for unique luxury timepieces. Zucky. Jerry will be right back. Monday. Now, this man crush called me out a few weeks ago for not being on my man crush list yet. So, you know I had to show him some love this week. It is Marcus Scribner. And we have seen, we have seen Marcus grow up in front of our eyes in the hit series Blackish. And now he's letting everybody know he is definitely grownish. Marcus, we see you. This young brother did not come to play. And that wraps up today's Man Crush Monday. We'll be right back. We'll be right back. I hope something on today's show put a smile on your face. And I want to thank our friends at Five Below. Tomorrow, Very Sherry Christmas continues. And from Ted Lasso, actress Hannah Waddingham will be here. Plus, I tried some holiday TikTok trends. So join us then for the best time in daytime. Bye -bye.